Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 64, we'll take a look at the classic alternative strategy of enterprise architecture. What we learned in lesson 62 was that the enterprise architecture strategies describe the overall enterprise architecture team structure, again, whether it's centralized or distributed, and how standards are applied and governed across the enterprise. And those standards could be based on technology, based on architecture, based on methodology, and based on process. Let's take a look at, again, all four of these. Uh, in the prior lesson, uh, we took a look at the prescriptive strategy. In this lesson, we'll stick with the centralized and look at the classic alternatives strategy. The classic alternative strategy of enterprise architecture specifies, again, how solutions should be developed through multiply, multiple approved standards applied across the enterprise. So in this strategy, which is still centralized, we still have a central enterprise architecture team defining and also governing those standards. And let's take a look at what I mean. So our central organization has the enterprise architects and the enterprise architecture team. But in the classic alternatives, what they provide are multiple approved standards. Notice the different colors here of kind of the turquoise, the blue, and the orange. Each business unit can choose to implement whatever particular standards that they want to that are approved. And so notice now, unlike the prescriptive, each business unit here has kind of different parts of those strategies or those standards. In other words, let's take a look and see what the central enterprise architecture team defined for us to use. And notice here, there's a lot of choices. As a matter of fact, notice here we have both the Java platform and .NET. There's some Spring, there's some Scala, MongoDB. We can use a DB2 database or an Oracle database. And now each business unit has to use one of these kind of standards, but they can mix and match these any which way they want to. Notice here we have both Agile and Lean as both company or enterprise approved standards that any department can now leverage. And so if we analyze this particular strategy, we notice it comes with a lot more flexibility for each of those business units or departments. However, teams are still not allowed to make their own choices. They can maybe influence the enterprise architecture team through variance models and such. But the point is that central enterprise architecture team are the ones who are forming these standards. And so let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of this approach. First of all, let's look at the pluses of this. Notice now it's still a centralized model but now it does start promoting the right tools for the right job. In other words, as opposed to the prescriptive, which was good cost savings and a lot of reuse, the point here is now I've got right tools for the right job. Each business unit, each team within each business unit now has more control over their choices of kind of what fits for what particular context. And also, we generally get better improved satisfaction. And so this is looking a lot better, but let's take a look at some of the negatives associated with this approach or this strategy, because now what we have, unlike the prescriptive in the prior lesson, we now have increased design time. So in other words, there's going to be more proof of concepts within each business unit team to say, should we use A or B? Hmm. I don't know. And consequently, because of that, some of the choices that the business units make may be incorrect. You see here, the enterprise architecture teams, those enterprise standards, instead of making the decisions for you, are now giving you the ability to make some choices. And sometimes those choices may be incorrect. Also, there are higher overall costs associated with this particular strategy. The more options we provide from a centralized governance body, the higher the costs are going to be. And this incurs, uh, these costs are incurred because of a couple of things, everybody. It's, it's generally licensing fees associated with, for example, supporting both Oracle databases and DB2 databases and Mongo and so on and so forth. 
The other costs come out because there's increased design time. In other words, each business unit, each team may end up doing some POCs or some analysis to determine which of the approved standards would be best for us. And so costs do tend to be a little bit higher than they do for the prescriptive approach. Now, what we're going to do in the next lesson is actually take a look at the decentralized models or strategies of enterprise architecture. Uh, but for more information, you can go all the way back to lesson 62, the enterprise architecture strategies, really to kind of get a grounding of all of these, and then review lesson 63 on the prescriptive approach to kind of see the differences between these two uh, strategies of enterprise architecture. Um, all of these lessons are on my website under Software Architecture Monday, and also I do private training classes, and these are in areas of software architecture, microservices, and also analyzing software architecture. And so I would encourage you to go to my website to look at those training classes. A lot of those are online that I do teach or publicly available. I also speak at a lot of conferences and you can always go to the upcoming events page of my website uh, to find out where those are. And so this has been Lesson 64, the classic alternative strategy of enterprise architecture. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Thank you so much for listening and stay tuned for the next lesson, Lesson 65, where we'll take a look at the distributed strategy of enterprise architecture.